Seems like the gun grabbers are literally shaking right now at the thought of Amy Coney Barrett being on the Supreme Court. Let's kind of talk about this. This is more of a lighthearted video. I just wanted to show you some of the examples of uh, things that they think, what they believe in, and their opinion on the topic because it's always good to get a little laugh every once in a while. So let's get into it. Before we get going though, I want to say thank you to one of the sponsors of this channel, Route 66 Shooting Sport Park. The best range that I've ever been to, aside from BLM land, which obviously has some uh, drawbacks as far as some of the uh, characters you might see out there. Route 66 is a shooting range down in San Bernardino that allows you to have a safe, enjoyable experience without all of the rules that would be typically found on a FUD range. They're not going to come and punch you in the face because you fired one round every 17 seconds. Uh, they're going to actually allow you to do the kind of shooting that you want to do with bays that currently go up to 200 yards, but in the future as they expand their 80 acres of facility they still have, they are gonna be doing a whole lot of more stuff in the future. Very excited to see where they go. Happy to support a family-owned business. Thank you. So let's talk about this today. This is something that I think is kind of funny with the uh, thought of Trump being to put another Supreme Court justice in place. It seems like the Democrats and the anti-gunners are just absolutely losing it. Here's one from Guns Down America. A Supreme Court that adopts an expansive view of the Second Amendment could strike down laws that have proven critical in reducing the horrors of cyclical regulatory gun violence and, and of mass shootings. Anti-gun trafficking laws, gun dealer regulations, the federal limits on interstate sales of handguns, and restrictions on sales of handguns to minors would all be at risk under a more expansive interpretation of the Second Amendment. I really don't need to explain to you why this is kind of silly, but realistically, one of the most likely cases that we would actually see hit the Supreme Court would be things like May Issue, CCW, or Open Carry, or an assault weapon ban. The assault weapon ban is something that from 1994 to 2004 included bans of types of guns like AR-15s and AK-47s and high-capacity magazines. That ban from 94 to 2004 was reviewed by the Department of Justice and shown to have zero effect on actual crime changes because crime in America has been on a steady decline. It's kind of interesting that they're so concerned about this. They say we have to do something when the something that they want to do is something we have done and has been proven to be ineffective. But, you know, let's just forget about all of that, right? Why would we want someone to be able to have guns? Uh, you know, guns are bad, right? And if we look at California on the Every Town for Gun Safety, it says seven times the amount of black children and teens in California are seven times as likely as their white peers to die by guns. Apparently, guns are racist. Uh, you know, that's news to me. I didn't know that my guns were racist. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe you can help me out. Maybe your guns are racist. If you have racist guns, turn them in. That's we just can't allow that, right? Then we go to Every Town for Gun Safety, their article that was posted on the 7th that says Judge Amy Coney Barrett's views on the Second Amendment are extreme and dangerous. Extreme and dangerous. Oh, like something like nonviolent people that have been convicted of felonies being able to own guns? Oh, that's pretty dangerous and extreme, right? Why would we want someone that's been convicted of a felony of fraudulent checks or insurance scams being able to have a gun because that would be too dangerous, right? Oh man, just hearing what they think is just absolutely ridiculous. So right here, last year, Judge Barrett authored a dissent in which she wrote that barring nonviolent felons, nonviolent, even serious felons like the plaintiff in the case at hand from possessing guns violates the Second Amendment. The two other judges on the panel from whose majority opinion Judge Barrett dissented were both Reagan appointees. They make this point of saying that, oh, hey, Reagan, the Republican, um, he put them in and she disagreed. So she's even more extreme and more radical than a Reagan, a Democrat, or a Republican appointee. Kind of ridiculous. But this thought of people being unable to own guns for the rest of their lives, if they are considered what we think and have determined through the course of law is are too dangerous to be in society and have guns. Why are we letting them out? If someone is so dangerous that if they were to have access to a firearm, that would be considered so unsafe for the rest of the population that we shouldn't allow them to have guns, why are we letting them out of jail? Why are we not doing other things? Clearly the system has not worked. Why are we continuing to punish someone past their sentence? 
If they've paid their dues to society, why are they not a free person? This is one of the things that I really have a hard time understanding why they disagree with, because we all know from apparently, you know, every town for gun safety, uh, racism, right? You know, well, the thing is, the criminal justice system more disproportionately affects people that are living in impoverished conditions, which is more likely to be people of color. So if they actually cared about people of color having equal rights and equal protections, wouldn't they want the system to be more lenient towards people that are more likely to be disenfranchised by the system? I don't know, maybe that's just me. So the last thing that I wanted to show you was this from NPR. Gun control groups voice grave concerns about Supreme Court nominees record, which is interesting when we then look at this from family of Joaquin Oliver, who was killed in 2018 Parkland school shooting, used AI to restore his voice and encourage people to vote. It seems like the only grave concerns they have is how are we going to use our dead children more effectively? Let's deep fake them and use their voice and trample on their graves to use them to motivate people to vote for gun control. I hope this video didn't frustrate you too much. I hope this got a good laugh out of you. This is just something that I think it's important for us to understand the uh, consequences of the next coming months. Uh, if we don't get a Supreme Court justice that is pro Second Amendment, it's most likely going to be that all the cases like Freedom Week, you know, Miller versus Becerra, Duncan versus Becerra, Rhodes versus Becerra, Nichols versus Newsom. Uh, the uh, open carry case that's been going on for 10 years, who I'm sorry, I don't reckon or remember your name off the top of my head. But all these court cases won't matter at all if we don't have a Supreme Court that's willing to take the case. And right now we have the opportunity to put a Supreme Court justice who is more radical than Scalia, <laughs> former Justice Scalia, when it comes to the Second Amendment. And if we can get that, that would be huge because... It doesn't matter if we lose at the ninth. It doesn't matter if we lose at the district level. If they can continue to appeal it on up, we can get to a point where we can have these cases heard by the Supreme Court. This is awesome. This is huge. If we can get Amy Coney Barrett into the Supreme Court, this could be the turning point. Because in the past, it was a 5-4 for the Democrat side being in the lead when it comes to who's actually going to be voting for or against gun control. But realistically, it was like a... 5-3 with a swing vote that wasn't really going to stand with them. Uh, so it's, you know, it wasn't as optimistic as we thought. Now it's going to be more like a 6-3 in our favor, and I think that's huge. If we can get someone in there, that would be allowing us to actually have these court cases be heard. We had 10 court cases earlier this year get dismissed and not heard by the Supreme Court, and that's unfortunate. Any one of those cases would have been a great opportunity. We haven't had a good case hit the Supreme Court since Heller, and I think maybe in 2010, I think it was Miller, or I might be saying off that wrong, but it's been a long time, and this could be huge. So I encourage you all to go out and vote. If you're curious of how to vote, go to GunVote2020. Just type that in on Google. It should get you going in the right place, get you an idea of what's going on. Check out your local representatives and uh, who you're actually going to vote for and those sorts of things, because local citywide elections are probably going to be the things that you have the most impact in, but I encourage you to vote, but this is the state of California, or at least I am and many of you are. So, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, vote in frustration and know that Biden is going to get the election here. But I encourage you to vote anyways. You know the drill. Have fun. Be safe. Stay dangerous. Peace.